So our experiments tonight are looking at varying methods for working out the density of an object. First task is to check on the density of some marbles and we have two unique methods for measuring marble density. First one we're going to use is using a caliper which will help us work out the volume of a marble. So let's work out that volume of marble using one of our calipers. So we are looking at our caliper with the marble and we've got the units of measurement along the main piece of the caliper and we're looking at that first etching on the bottom set of gradations on the ruler and that first etching is our actual point of measurement. So your caliper might be in centimetres or as in this example measuring actually in millimetres will measure along to that first graduation point on the lower part of the ruler to give our initial measurement in millimetres. If we look at the caliper more closely we see that we've gone just beyond the 16 millimetre mark. So we now use this lower scale to give us a next decimal point on the marble diameter reading. Count along until one of these graduations is exactly matched up with one of the markings on the ruler. And we see at number 6 we have an exact alignment with 40. So the reading for this marble, reading for its diameter, is 16 millimetres, 16.6 millimeters. So remember check to see whether your caliper is measuring in centimeters or measuring in millimeters. If it's measuring in millimeters like the one we just looked at, that value has to be divided by 10 to turn it into a centimeter value before putting it into your equation to work out the volume from the diameter. So the mass, together with your calculated volume, will give you the density of a single marble. Now for the second marble density, you're going to take the mass for five or six marbles and then do a water displacement in a measuring cylinder to get the volume of your marbles. Start off with a measuring cylinder with about 50 milliliters of water measured, add in the marbles while carefully making sure none of your water splashes out. And once the marbles have been added in, look at your new adjusted volume. The difference between the final volume and the initial volume is the volume for the marbles. Make sure that you shake the measuring cylinder without losing any of the water to make sure that any air bubbles have been dislodged from the sides of the marbles. So for the measurement of the density for an irregular shaped metal, again, like the second method for the marble, fill a measuring cylinder halfway with water, add the metal pieces to give a reasonable volume displacement, something in the range of maybe 5 to 20 milliliters should be good enough, and then shake the measuring cylinder to make sure that all of the air bubbles have become loose and removed from the metal pieces. And that change in volume from the initial to the final. A change in volume is the volume for those metal pieces. Take that total mass divided by that change in volume and that will give you the density for the irregular pieces. Compare it to the graph of known metals at the bottom of the page and pick which metal your density matches the closest. If it doesn't match one of them closely, then try again and make sure that you think about the possible sources of error for your experiment. Did some of the water splash out? Do you have some air bubbles? Have you accurately measured the volume of the initial solution and the volume displacement afterwards?
So we're looking at the density of an egg. And we're trying to match the density of the egg to the density of a water solution. Initially, when you add an egg to water, because the egg is more dense, the egg will sink to the bottom. So we're going to keep adding salt to the water solution, stirring between additions, and we want to eventually get to the point where the density of the egg is equal to the density of the solution. At that critical point, the egg should be floating in the middle of the solution. It isn't touching the top, which means it's less dense than the solution, and it isn't touching the bottom, which means it's more dense than the solution. So when densities are equal, the egg should float somewhere in the middle. It might take maybe as much as half a minute to settle. Now that we have the egg matched in density to the solution, now we have to measure the density of the solution. So take a sample of the solution that the egg is floating in, maybe 50 or 60 milliliters, and measure the mass of that volume on the balance. You will now be able to work out the density of the solution, taking its mass divided by the volume, and the density of that solution is equal to the density of the egg. The trick is get is ah, Lance, that was your fault. <laughs> Sorry.